John, it is your boy. Oh, okay, interesting. It's your guy, D-Mac, having some Facebook issues. It's got nothing to do. Oh, okay, and there we are on Facebook. All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm uh, on X, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm glad you're with me. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're at Avid Caddy as we are for non Nuggets home games. And um, so I will not be here tomorrow, but here today. <clears throat> and yes, I've been uh, a little bit under the weather, but feel much better today overall. Had to take yesterday off, which I hate. Not being on, hate it, hate, hate not being on here um, with you, hate not being on the air, um, on altitude, um, it's my least favorite thing. And what happened is yesterday morning, I I did um, about last night, and I really struggled to get through that. So I had to cancel everything else throughout the rest of the day, but fortunately I feel better So I'm glad to be with you from Avid Caddy Golf Lounge, 9556. Park Meadows Drive in Lone Tree, where they now have the link set up so you can register to attend our watch party for Championship Monday, next Monday night. Watch along, watch the championship game. Um, and the Sweet 16 is getting going, and um, it's going to be a blast. So if you've been thinking about coming down here, first of all, if you come down here while I'm here, we can set you up with some free golf while I'm here and here for the next hour. But they can let that drip in if you get here after 530. Just give them a holler at 303-376-3745. Just let them know that you're headed down here and um, they'll, they'll let you sample it and check it out. Um, I've had a few friends, my wife, her friends. People love it. You just got to see these incredible golf bays that have um, 200 courses loaded in on them, a driving range, real comfortable area. It's a private establishment that's open for you where you can bring your own food and drink and whatever you need. They actually have a tournament that they have going off at 5 o'clock, but there's still room here today if you wanted to come down. And uh, that's Avid Caddy Golf Lounge, 9556 Park Meadows Drive. Also, of course, as always, Everything we do on Kill You With Truth, all of our programs are presented by Ed Pray The Real Estate. You can check out the number one trusted team in Colorado for real estate. That's edprather.com. Would love to have you contact Ed. We are uh, going back and forth on selling our home and buying another home, all with Ed Prather and his team. And it does take a uh, village and a team, and Ed Prather's got the right village and team. And we are so gratefully appreciative of Ed Prather. So here we are. Um, we're happy to preview the Avs and the Rangers. We have an update for you on that. The Broncos mock drafts. But most importantly on the Hangout, we hang out and we talk about what you want to talk about. So whatever you want to get into, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments. That's how we operate here. And that's what generates the vast majority of the conversation. Other than that, it'll just be me talking to myself. And it's more fun to talk to you than for me to talk to myself. But I can talk to myself if if need be. Uh, I'm just going to... Okay, here we go. Uh, you giving Scott the mock you was great. Oh, I appreciate that, Mile High. Yeah, at 1 o'clock on the radio show, we do a segment called Mock You. And, um, you know, I love mock drafts. I love them. I absolutely love them. My, one of my favorite websites is NFL mock draft database.com. It is it's something like that. It's along those lines and it aggregates all the mocks and you may snub your nose at mock drafts and, you know, Oh, you know, what do they really know? They know a lot and you've got to know how to read the mocks. You've got to be able to sort of, so to think that I just follow one or two mocks is ridiculous. I, I use that website, and it'll give me more than 60 mocks. It'll aggregate everything together. It'll give you analytics. And, yeah, no mock will get everything completely right, but it shows you trends. And if you can read the trends, you can see where things are going. 
So in the latest mock, which is of significance, is Matt Miller from ESPN. <coughs> Excuse me. Still a little cough. I'll be fine, but we're going to have to deal with some coughs here. In the latest mock on ESPN, it has the Broncos. Well, it has the Broncos moving up for four for JJ McCarthy. Okay, now um, in this mock, it also has the Patriots trading with the Vikings to go to three and eleven and whatever they got to give up. This is going to be very important for the Broncos that the Patriots actually show some wiggle room. So what we need to happen in order to get J.J. McCarthy, and I feel, and I'm fine if they don't get J.J. McCarthy because I like Bo Nix, but if if the Broncos, one of the things that I've heard 10 million times is, oh, you only move up if you love them. Well, of course, show me teams that move up that don't love their quarterback, love their decision. They always do. But the best way to show a quarterback you love him is to move up to get him. It is. It proves to everybody what you're willing to give up because it goes beyond just your pick where it exists. And when you move back, it means, listen, we like you. We don't love you. We'll take you, but we'll take you if we can get something else. It's a bargain basement sort of deal. And I just seriously question your commitment to quarterbacks that you're getting out of the discount bin. I do. And that's why second and third rounders to me are just like dog poop. Like it means very low commitment and really seriously, why'd you pick the guy there in the first place? I mean, for what purpose? You you clearly don't think enough of him that he's worth a first round pick. And if your quarterback isn't a first worth, if your quarterback isn't worth the following, a first round pick, or a contract worth $40 million. Why is he on the team? So you say, oh, Brock Purdy. Oh, okay, fine. But you mean to tell me Brock Purdy isn't going to be worth $40 million when that time comes around? He's going to get the most outrageously big contract of all time. So if you want to roll the dice, talk about a bargain basement move to get somebody in the third round to say, well, you know, we think you're going to be worth $40 million in three years. Because that's when you have to make the decision, by the way. Yeah, I mean, you would never wait till they're – you only get four years if you draft somebody outside of the first round. You don't have the fifth-year option. <coughs> so you've got to make your mind up on a guy in three years one way or the other. That's why I set the standard at 37 games. Basically two and a half years. 37 starts also gives you two full off-seasons – well, three, no, three off seasons, three training camps, 37 starts. You'll know. You'll know after that time. And 37 is roughly two and a half years because maybe the guy doesn't start for six or seven games his rookie year, but then gets in the mix. Well, okay, now, now we start the clock. But those off seasons matter. Training camps matter. All that stuff matters. And, you know, and, and like my guy, Doug, is here, is like, like Drew Locke. Correct. Where's the commitment to Drew Locke? I mean, what was the point of drafting Drew Locke if you weren't going to commit to him? And the stupidest thing of all time was that ridiculous quarterback competition, which wasn't a competition, as we found out later, because Vic Fangio couldn't identify a, a quarterback if it was growing off his butt. It, it's just... The fact that that guy was in charge of the Denver Broncos is its absolutely mind-blowing. I'm glad we got Sean Payton. And I know Sean Payton hasn't um, drafted a high quarter, high drafted quarterback before. But at least he understands offense and quarterbacks. At least he knows what it looks like. At least he knew... Like, this wasn't going to work out with Russ and moved along. Do you think Hackett would have ever made the move that just happened? No way. And I know how highly um, Greg Penner thinks of Sean Payton, and that's good enough for me. Good enough for me. 
Uh, Zach, cool. They have old mocks as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. NFL mock draft database.com is unreal. I mean, it's it's a crazy good website. Crazy good. Insane. Uh, here's I was going to get to this, Kevin. Thank you for bringing it up. <coughs> this is where the rubber meets the road. When the wise guys tell you what what's what. Per DraftKings, the over-under for Broncos wins this season is five and a half. Woof. Payne has never won fewer than seven games as a head coach. In my opinion, if he has a quarterback who can run his O, even Stidham or rookie, the floor is seven. Kevin, I wish that was the truth. But I've got the Broncos at a four-win season. Now, a four-win season can easily turn into a five-win season. It can. You, things could just bounce your way. And um, there are lucky ways to win games. A bad call goes against the other team, goes your way. I mean, there's loads of way, if you're a four-win team, that you could run into a fifth win. Injuries to the other team, um, scheduling, mishaps. I don't know. There's, there's all sorts of ways you can pick up one maybe two extra wins, but it doesn't negate who you truly are. Like I'd make the argument the Broncos were really a six win team last year that stumbled into eight. Okay. They should have lost that Chicago game and they probably should have lost that Buffalo bills Monday night game. They were way down in the bears game and it took a crazy penalty, 12 men on the field for them to luck into the Buffalo Bills win, okay? Now, other games they truly won, but really, what were the Broncos? And if you can say, well, there's games they they lost, they could have won, okay, sure, there were other close games, but not like that Bears game and not like that Bills game. So the Broncos are probably a four-win team, and that's why DraftKings has the over under at five and a half. What do, what do you think? that there, There's not some thought that goes into that? Yeah. And that's who the Broncos are. It's a 53-32 split on Russell's contract. They're signing guys like Josh Reynolds from the Lions at bargain basement deals. They're trading off Jerry Judy for fifth and sixth round picks, and he doubles down by getting a monster contract from the Browns. And my guy Colin wants to play with me a little bit. Jordan Love, Lamar Jackson, Aaron Rodgers, even Joe Flacco and Mahomes didn't go in the top 10. Well, first of all, why don't we be a lot more specific with what those are? Specifically, and I'm not even sure where Joe Flacco went, but Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers went in the 20s. The 20s are a nightmare place to take quarterbacks. And so are you positive Jordan Love is the truth? Um. Also, you point out Aaron Rodgers. That was like three CBAs ago. Collective bargaining agreements. That was how many years ago was Aaron Rodgers? Do you, do you really think a draft from 20 years ago applies to what happens now? Are you nuts? The rules have changed. The cap space has changed. Everything has changed. There is zero chance Aaron Rodgers would go that late in the draft now. And Joe Flacco. I don't even remember where Joe Flacco went. In terms of Jordan Love, that's just a bad draft pick, period. Period. It's a dumb pick, and look what that did to the Packers organization. Not good. Stupid. Mahomes wasn't in the top 10, but I didn't talk about top 10. I just said highly drafted guys. And if you don't take into account the nature of the marketplace, you're again incredibly naive. Should quarterbacks go one, two, three, and four this year? It's never happened before. And there's a better likelihood of that happening than ever before. Does that mean the quarterbacks are so much better? No. But the marketplace dictates what happens and what doesn't happen. And you can stop your feet and be mad about it but it doesn't change the truth of the situation. It's why in the last game of the season, 
I was saying, well, you're doing nothing but hurting yourself if you win this game. Now, I'm not advocating tanking throughout the course of a season. That's ridiculous. But the last game of the year, the last game of the year is a game when you have nothing to benefit from winning. Is a game I would not play anybody who has any potential value whatsoever. It's just not that important. You can see now what's happening. The culture of every team is regenerated from one year to another. Nothing really lasts and nothing carries over. There's too much change. So who gives a shit if you win the game the previous year when 30% of your roster just turns over? It's different in other sports. The entire Nuggets starting lineup came back. That matters. Hockey matters. It doesn't matter in football. There's just too high of a turnover every single year. All that rah-rah bullshit about oh, the culture of the team. No, you didn't make the playoffs. End of the year. That's it. And the NFL, it's so cut and dry. You either make the playoffs and give yourself a shot or you don't. And the culture has to be reinvented year after year. It's why it makes the NFL so damn exciting and so interesting. But don't go culture. Have you seen what's going on with CU? Three significant players are gone answering the portal. And you're likely to lose more to the NBA draft. Culture is a weird thing. All right, let's see what else we got here today. Uh, LOL, there's only 23 people here. You're dumb. <laughs> Gregory, what's that number right now, brother? What do you got right now, Gregory? What's happening? Just hang in there, pal. Thank you, though, Gregory. Appreciate you chiming in. Gregory, my man. Gregory doesn't quite get it. It's okay. You can, you can talk to Gregory in the comments if you want. Feel free. We're at Avid Caddy, 303-376-3745. You can hit them up for free golf. They got a tournament going at five, so this place is going to be filling in. But there's free golf for you if you want it while I'm here. And um, we have registration open for our watch long. Nate Jackson will be with me. We'll see who else we can get to show up. We're going to watch the championship game together live from Avid Caddy. Would love for you to sign up and join us. Please consider doing that and join us to watch the championship game coming up a week from Monday, right? Yeah, Sweet, sweet 16. This weekend. So we got, we got about a week and a half to, to fill it up and would love to have you join us. Like I said, they got a tournament going on here today, so you'll see some folks filtering in and playing in the tournament. So that's a cool deal. Uh, should have won the Raiders opener as well. If we're going to play the should have, could have, would have game. Sure. Sure. Of course, Matt, you're not wrong there, but they didn't. Uh, do you think Caleb Williams has too many distractions to be successful in the league? No, I don't. And I've got a little bit uh, of a different take than Nate and Chad, but listen, you got to respect ex NFL players and pro athletes who are in the locker room and you weren't, and I wasn't okay. So, um, I'll tell you this with the lip gloss and the pink phone and the, what it, that to me is just, it, it, it means virtually nothing. And, I'm the last person in the world to give advice on fashion and <coughs> what's happening. What, what I know is there's just a new generation of people, young, very talented athletes that are entering the world of pro sports period and how they define what's cool and what's hip and what's happening is so much different. And um, I don't think anything is a big deal. And I don't think Caleb Williams has too many distractions to be successful in the league. Not at all. But I do respect folks like Nate, Chad, Tyler, Scott, other people 
who have been in locker rooms and they know what it's like. They know what it's been like. I just think things inevitably just change in life and culture and probably for the best, frankly, probably for the ultimately for the best. So, no, I, I don't think Caleb Williams has too many distractions. I think there's different ways to communicate with young people and young people have the right to determine how they're perceived and their role in sports. And more and more, I think it's better that the athletes take control of their situation. So you won't catch me that this is not a get off my lawn moment for me, at least. I have my other get off my lawn moments, but I have said 10 million times that I think sports should be competed as if they were invented yesterday. For, for example, here we are at Avocaddy. It's a golf simulator um, with real courses. And 20 years ago, could a place like this exist? Well, no. And who's to say that golf or any sport has to be solely competed in the parameters that it once existed? You can redefine things anytime you want. They're, they do it in football all the time. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, the new kickoffs thing suck. Well, I, I would say, no, I don't think so. Now, I would just make it a football play. I, I wouldn't do the same thing that they're doing. Um, because I think a football play is more interesting. I think, I think kicking itself should be mitigated. I think mean, kicking essentially is boring. I would make field goals somehow harder. I, I think um, it should be de-emphasized, not, but the way it is now, you'd be a fool not to have a highly paid field goal kicker. They're just so unbelievably valuable to you. They're too valuable. For example, your field goal kicker every year should not be your leading scorer, but they are for every team every single year. Your fucking leading scorer is a field goal kicker. I would change things. I would take away extra points completely. Larry David has the classic, just get rid of the goalpost. It's not a bad idea. You score a touchdown. You go from the two-yard line for two points, four-yard line for three points, and maybe there's a four-point play from the 10-yard line. Still football. Be a more meaningful play than a fucking kick. Kicking, place kicking, field goals, kickoffs suck. Okay? They just inherently suck. Punting, to me, is a different skill. I think there's skill involved with punting. I think more crazy shit can happen with punting. And you're not scoring points punting. It's not an offensive play. Punting is a defensive play. And it would encourage more people to go for it on fourth down which would make the game of football so much more interesting if there, no, if, if there were no field goals, fourth and four at your own 30 would be a football play because you wouldn't be as afraid about giving up three easy points. It's a good goddamn idea to just get rid of the goal, just take the goalposts away. Football would be a better sport with no goalposts. Larry David's on to something. And so if there were no goalposts, I mean, the kickoff itself, the more football plays, fourth down is an exciting football play. The more fourth downs, the better. And you say, well, well, you know, it's only good because, you know, team could, you know, kick an extra point. Well, yeah. So get a field goal. Get rid of it. Seriously. If All right. If you invented football today for tomorrow, would field goals be part of it? Not my world, they wouldn't. Why? I would want football players making football plays to determine football games. So I would have a touchdown be worth six. From the two-yard line, it's two. From the four-yard line, it's three. From the Or may, back it up. Two-yard line is two points. Five-yard line is three points. Ten-yard line is four points. You choose. Make it more interesting. Think about that one for a second. There's no field goals. Would not have kickoffs. 
Do you like a coin flip? Fine. It's fourth down and 15 from your own 30. Start. You could go for it. You could punt it. And if you score, you get the ball. Yeah, you did something positive. You scored. You still get the ball. Fourth and 15 from your 30. What are you going to do? And just play. Play. I would do something radically different, too. I hate kneel downs. I think kneel downs are stupid. I would say you have to try to advance the ball. If you don't advance the ball, if you kneel down, the clock stops automatically. Period. So I'd get rid of kneel downs by just saying, if you kneel down, the clock stops. So you're forced to run a play. And, and if you have to do something more radical, I would say you're forced to either throw the ball or give the ball to an offensive person at least three yards behind the quarterback somehow. I don't know. Do something. But if you kneel down or fall down on purpose, the clock automatically stops. Something like that. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, Love is going to take the pack onto the playoffs this season. For years to come, smart pick by Green Bay. I think it was stupid, Matt. With all due respect, you had a limited time for Aaron Rodgers, and you decided to not help your team. When you have a chance to win a Super Bowl, you got to do everything you can to help your quarterback win. And they did not do that by drafting Jordan Love. I think it was a stupid draft pick. And you can't tell me there aren't quarterbacks who came along later that you could have drafted. Let's see. Uh, I want to go back to my guy here who said, uh, LOL, that's why there's only 23 people here. You're dumb. So there's 100 times that amount here now. Thanks, Gregory. Just checking in with you. Uh, let's see here. Is Penix draft capital rising after his pro day? Could mess with the Broncos' chance to get him at 12. Uh, no, Penix is, he's not in, in many first round mocks, period. He's there. You could drop back and get Penix. You could get him at 12. There's no issues with Penix. It's pro days. It's not going to matter. Um, the injury history is the injury history, and I, I would not. After what we saw with Jeff Hireman, KJ Hamler, and Greg Dulcich, I, I wouldn't touch Penix with a 10-foot pole. It's too risky. Sorry. Sucks. It's probably not fair, um, but it's way too risky. Want to thank Ed Prather for sponsoring everything with Kill You With Truth. Ed Prather, the most trusted real estate team in Colorado. Ed's the absolute best. Love Ed Prather and his team. What would I do without Ed Prather and his team? Are you kidding me? Buying and selling a home, it's crazy. Thank you to Ed Prather. Check him out at edprather.com. What you can see behind me here at Avid Caddy is uh, they're filling in for a tournament that's getting going at 5 o'clock, so the bays will be filled up. And then there's a – that's a driving range bay right uh, next to me. So these are incredible. 200 golf courses to choose from. It is a golf lounge, a private club, but it's open for memberships and they have golf instruction. So whether you are a unbelievable golfer, I mean, these bays are expensive, man. They have not, they have not gone cheap here. That's for sure. So you get an experience here that you just cannot, I mean, good luck getting one of these at your house. That's for sure. They have put the investment into it. And because it's a private club, you can bring whatever you want into here. So you can have some fun. They got, you know, like a ping pong table and they got, you know, place to lounge around and watch TV, pool table, got a changing room, like a real clubhouse for you here at 9556 uh, Park Meadows Drive. And they're just going to build more cool stuff here for you. If you want to register and you need to register to come, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything, but they need you to register for our watch along for the championship game at avidcaddy.com slash DMAC. Let's get you signed up, bring some friends, family, some folks. I'll be here. Nate Jackson will be here. We'll see um, how many friends and family and pals we can get to join us to watch along. Should be a blast. And we're going to live stream the whole thing. So that's going to be a blast. Going to be fun. All right, Mel. 
after you laugh me off as an idiot for saying the halves would be competitive, are you going to do it again today? Well, they scored two goals, okay? Listen, it wasn't great. One of the few I did miss. <coughs> I've been fighting a little bit of cold. I'm actually on the better side of things now. See, I've gone 30 minutes here straight. No problem. I'll do this all day. But I'll be at the Rangers game tonight. I'm looking forward to see what the energy and excitement is for that game tonight. Um, Listen, man. Uh, Mel, with all due respect, every game can't be the seventh game of the Stanley Cup final. It can't be. And they got unlucky. They allowed two goals. They scored one. Thank God McKinnon got the one. Hopefully he'll go for 35 tonight, consecutive scoring streak. But I'm not laughing you off. They should have won. They're a better team than the Habs. I wasn't taking them too lightly, but okay, they lost. All right, it's over. It's not the end of the world. It sucks. You know, you don't want to give away games, but they had won nine in a row. They got a huge game against the Rangers tonight. Nobody's taking that lightly, and it's a bummer Nachushkin won't be there. Sean Luke Foodie was called up. Okay. And Kimmy Ronson has been sick. So, all right, we'll see how that goes. Um, Georgie will be in the net, even though he was not at morning skate, facing his old team with Shesterkin in the net for the Rangers. And the Rangers are on fire. The Rangers are actually one point better, 98 points to 97 points. And with Dallas playing Vancouver, it's kind of a let's go time. So, full attention will be this is a great game tonight. And then they play Nashville over the weekend. They're on fire. That'll be a great game. So just every game in the NHL cannot be the most important game in the world. All the games from now on are big. We understand that. But there's sort of levels of being big. This one is going to have everybody's attention. Everybody's attention. What a great win for DU. Awesome. Glad to hear that. The mini muggles are with you, D. JG, I appreciate it. What would I do without the mini muggles, the muggle heads? Do you like mini muggles or muggle heads? I sort of like muggle heads a little better, but I can go with mini muggles. No problem. What we got? I'm here listening while golf is on the background. Well, that's that's the deal. We're at Avid Caddy. That's where we do hang out live. That's where we'll be. And listen, man, you got to understand something. I love working at altitude. I don't like it. I love it. Love it. Want to work for a long time and end my career. That's how long I want to be at altitude. And I have, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I mean, I'm, I worked at the fan for um, 15 and a half years. My goal is to work longer at altitude than I worked at the fan. That's my goal. So all that being said, because that's what I want to do. Getting this Kill You With Truth network off the ground has been such a fascinating project. And without people like Ed Prather and Avid Caddy, we would have no shot. We would be dead in the water. And um, the sacrifices quite a few people have made to, to make this happen are outrageous. And to have Ed Prather and Avid Caddy have a little bit in faith of what we're doing means so much to us. So I'm never going to give up my terrestrial radio roots and my desire to work there. That is so important to me, I can't even explain it. But having the support to try something new and different and innovative is so cool. So I want both to work together the best that they can. So that's why you hear golf balls rocketing off the background and why we're just streaming here, not on the radio. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So, um, and I cannot speak highly enough of altitude that they know exactly what I'm doing. They're like, go for it. They've been so supportive. And I, I know for a fact that would not be the case where I was last time. I don't think that I know it. I'm just in a better place. That's all. I love it. I absolutely love it. So that's what's going on. Um, no Rockies watch long. Um,
I can't do it tonight because I'm at the abs game. But I will have, we're going to call it bottom of the eighth. So, you know, if I'm at something, I'm at something. So, you know, let's see, maybe. Mile high. I don't want to, I don't want to promise it. But I'll tell you this. If I get home tonight after the Avs game and the Rockies are still on, I will go live. And I do love baseball, even though the beginning of the season, I'm not going to lie, stuck up on me a little bit. And that is not to insult baseball or the Rockies. And if anybody knows anything about me, they know what a big baseball guy I am. So I'm the last person in the world that has to defend themselves about baseball, if you know anything about me. All right, let's go here. What are your thoughts on Tim Patrick? Um... Tim agreed to a one-year vet minimum prove-it deal. And they have signed Josh Reynolds, not to a huge deal, but two years, $14 million. My thoughts on Tim Patrick is I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for Tim Patrick. But he's going to have to prove that he can stay healthy. So he's a great guy. He is beloved by his teammates and coaches. But he is in a prove-it situation. That is the that is just the flat out truth. So do not be surprised if he's a vet cut. Don't know how else to put it. But I can see a world where the four of the wide receivers are Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, and Josh Reynolds. And they got room for one more in that situation. But I'll tell you this, if they wrap their arms around another free agent wide receiver, one more, that's probably a wrap on Tim Patrick. And that's the harsh reality of the situation. So I'm rooting for Tim Patrick. He's a great guy. Um, and he's going to be in an extremely competitive situation in training camp. Would you rather have Bo Nix or Shadur Sanders? Well, Bo Nix, because that would be this year. And I want a quarterback this year. So your question really is, between the two of them, who would I rather have? And that is a tricky one for me to answer because, again, I'm not in on the meetings. I don't get to have – I don't get to see the personal workouts, and I'm not in um, the interviews. So, I don't know what to tell you on that. Um, I'm not that concerned with Deion Sanders uh, um, being a helicopter dad. Listen, I think a lot of that is Deion messing with people. I don't think, I think he's going to, his kids are just going to go wherever they get drafted to. He's not going to pull some sort of weird move and control their lives. I think a lot of it is bluster that is not going to be supported in reality. I think his kids would go to a cold weather city, the same they would go to a warm weather city. Um, and I'm throwing Travis Hunter in there too. So I would have no problem with Shadur Sanders, by the way, no problem whatsoever. If, Sean Payton, Greg Penner, and I guess George Payton. But, I'm, you know, I'm thinking my four-legged table is more of a three-legged stool. Because I'm, I'm, I'm realizing quicker than ever that the GM actually kind of doesn't matter if the coach is running the show. So it could be a three-legged stool or a four-legged table. It sort of depends. So I, I would, I would choose Bo Nix, but not for the reasons that you would, you would think, or you, uh, surmised by your question. Uh, what's up on uh, the world word on the street is that Bo Nix is falling down in the draft. Should the Broncos trade down and get him and try to get a second round pick by trade down? No, they should not. They might, they might do exactly what you're saying because that is exactly what is happening. But um, 
But no, they shouldn't. I mean, we're talking about giving up a first round pick in 2025 to move to four. And you don't need to use three first round picks to go from 12 to four. You don't. I promise you, you don't. Um, you would need to flip flop picks. You would need a 2025 first and probably a third round pick this year. And that would be enough. If it's a big F. If the Vikings do a deal with the Patriots to move to three. If you do that, it means the Patriots don't care about drafting a quarterback. So they're out. It would also mean the value for the Cardinals goes down massively if the Vikings move in front of them. Massively. So what you have to hope for, because you can't compete with the Vikings. You're not going to get ahead of the Vikings. So you got to hope the Vikings do a deal with the Patriots. And then you don't need three first rounders to move up from 12 to four. You need two. And one of them is a flip flop. And then you don't have to give up 2026, but you would have to give up 2025 and you would have to give up your third round pick this year. So it's going to sting, but it's not going to be three first rounders. And if you don't do that, the Cardinals are just going to simply do a deal with the, the Vikings and you're not going to be able to compete with the Vikings having a, a flip in a higher spot than you and the 23rd per, pick in the first round. You're not going to be able to compete with that. My guy Stoli, I'm with you. The oh, I don't know what you're with me about, but I'm glad you're with me. Oh, here you go. I'm with you, DMAC. Get rid of the kicker. Send him back to soccer. Fine. And I played soccer my whole life. So that's not an insult. I can insult soccer players because I was a soccer player. Uh, a lot more shutouts. Mm, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. Oh, a lot more shutouts if, if there was no goalposts? Okay. All right. Who fucking cares? A lot more going forward on fourth down. A lot more football. How is a field goal an exciting thing to watch? We've just been drilled into our, our, our field goals suck. Who needs them? Your quoting advice, Larry David, has come up with. Now I know you're still under the weather. <laughs> it's a good idea. I'll take good ideas wherever they come from. Larry David is a football addict. He's talked about this with Dana White. Did you realize with the XFL, USFL, whatever it is these days, Dana White, uh, The Rock, sorry. The Rock, wow. By the way, did you see that video where uh, Sage Steele thought Dana White was Joe Rogan? <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. Uh, a lot more 0-0 zero -zero games for teams that can't get to the end zone. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, if you want to do something goofy, if you want to do something goofy with scoring, give a team a point if they get it inside the 10-yard line. Boom. One point. You got inside the 10. One. One nothing. There you go. I solved it. Not as many shutouts. We'll have one nothing games. The points are a thing, though. Like if shitty red zone teams get to the 25 every time, then they don't get rewarded. All right, I just I just solved it. You get a point. I don't know. Do you want to get a point if you get inside the red zone? Get a point. One point. First down inside the red zone, which is the 20-yard line, not the 25. But you get inside the 20-yard line, you get a point. You got a point. Good. Now you can't convert. Well, oh well. Up yours. Teams would always be going for it on fourth down, so they'd be turning the ball over a lot, but it would be more exciting. I don't know. I mean, you want to be, you want to fuck with rules and stuff? I mean, maybe you get a point for every 40. If you can, if you can get 40 yards on a drive, you get a point. If you get in the red zone, you get a point. 
I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking off the top of my head, but you can figure it out. Does your theory about football playing like it was invented yesterday apply to baseball? Yes. The average baseball fan is like 70 years old. Uh, yes, absolutely applies to baseball, applies to every sport. And baseball made a lot of rule changes last year that greatly helped baseball. Gr- they increased the size of the base. The pitch clock is fucking brilliant. Um, they stopped the shift. They did a lot of things that made baseball way better. Listen, if you're bored by baseball, fine. But baseball is being competed by younger, more athletic, better athletes than ever. That is more diverse because it's worldwide participation. Baseball is being played better than it's ever been played. If you just don't like it or you say, well, it's for old people, then then fine. But the game itself is just better. Uh, DMAC, I'm in St. Louis. Let me know if you need me to check in on Dylan for you, RJ. I appreciate it. Thank you, RJ. That would be a riot. That'd be pretty damn funny. But uh, we'll leave the stalking alone, RJ. I appreciate it, though. Uh, yes, it does. DMAC has a lot of baseball takes. I could go on and on and on about baseball. I'll give you a million takes on baseball. Anyone else forget, forgot, forget today was Rocky's opening day. It's going to be another long year road to a hundred. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people did Stoli, And, um, I think the Rockies themselves, listen, I think the Rockies could do a much better PR job with their team. Here's the problem, though. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what they should do. Okay. Because I experienced this with the fan. The Rockies need to have basically every radio station in town. They should they should pay for radio stations in town to go to spring training for a week. And when they're there allow them to broadcast from inside of the um, of the facility while games are going on. They should get players on the shows, every show. And I'm not just talking about the talk shows, and I'm not talking just about radio stations you're partners with. The easiest way to get more excitement is to expose, expose more people to baseball. And you don't need to do that in New York or Boston or um, places that just take baseball more seriously. But you do need to do that here. And you should do that here. The most excited we got about the Rockies is when the fan, who was not a broadcast partner of the Rockies, broadcast from Scottsdale for a week at the stadium itself. All the shows were in Talking Stick. It was Awesome. We were pumped up. Alfred caught a foul ball. That is no shit. We were on the air live. A foul foul ball came back. He caught it barehanded. It's actually one of the most stunning athletic feats I've ever seen in my life. KOA got ticked off about it. And so the next year we went down to spring training. Oh, you can't broadcast. So now we're just in a, like a radio booth somewhere in Phoenix. And then two years later, we just didn't go. Oh, no, no, no. No, we went. No, I'm sorry. We did go, but we, we went as like individual shows. We didn't go together. And then three years later, we stopped going and we've never gone back. And, uh, and that's the way it goes. And then you start the season with seven games on the road. Four games in Arizona, three games in Chicago. Opening day is April 5th, but it's against like, what was it against Tampa? Some shit team. And uh, not, it's not a shit team. Tampa's not a shit team. It's just like, it's not some, there's not a big rivalry. Just be more open, Rockies. I'm giving you some advice here to just get the word out about you've got a lot of great young players. Why didn't we have Nolan Jones on our radio show today? I don't know. That'd have been a fun thing to promote. Ezekiel Tovar signed a new deal. Why wasn't he on the show? Doyle, young, exciting player. Brendan Rogers. Charlie Blackman. Why were none of these guys on the air with us today or this week?
I, I, I would love to help the Rockies r- generate positive PR and spin. But the reason why people sort of forgot that today was opening day is because you did a lousy you did you did a lousy job putting it out there to places that it should have been put out to. And instead, you just lean into your own radio partners and broadcast partners and you get what you get. You get what you get. But, you know, your radio partners are strong. It's iHeart. So that's eight radio stations. It's a lot. But, you know, when you I, and you don't really need to do it if you're, you know, one of the more popular teams in town. You don't. But you got the abs and nuggets with like playoff like games every single game. You got sold out arenas at Ball Arena every night for years and years. You have true excitement going on. The Rangers are here tomorrow night. The Timberwolves are here. You just had the Canadiens. You got the Suns, Kevin Durant. I mean, do you realize what you're competing with? And and frankly, just the excitement about the NFL and the draft is huge. So, uh, you know, the NCAA tournament's going on right now. All right. Anyways, get me all fired up. Uh, DMAC, please don't get any more players sick. It was not my fault, Mel. I was not there on Tuesday. The Rangers are winning tonight. Oh, boy. Okay. Hope not. Uh, thank God Moj finally took the Vic nude down. That thing was burning my eyes on the Twitch feed. Yeah, I gotcha. I mean, I'm glad they put it up. I thought it was funny as hell to talk about. Uh, Josh Montana. Great name. Awesome channel, DMAC. This is how you build an audience. Just be your authentic sports-loving self. Like having a friend come over and talk sports. That's the benefit of this medium. Brother, you're hitting the nail on the head. Thank you, Josh. So subscribe and like. Really pay attention and help out our... But we got two sponsors now. We got two. Two. Advocati and Ed Prather. That's it. Two. So go to the websites. Sign up for stuff. Tell them you like us. That's it. Two. Two. Ed Prather Real Estate. The number one real estate team in Colorado. Go to his website. Find out some information. Give him a holler. Say what's up. The Fed's going to reduce the rates in June, we hope. And that will make um, the process even better. So, Ed Pr- I couldn't give a stronger endorsement than Ed Prather selling. And I'm, I'm selling my house with Ed. Monday we close. And a week from Monday, um, that's going to be a huge day for me. Oh, my God. Just a regular day. Then we're going to have the watch party. I'm closing on the new house that I'm buying townhome. Um, such a big deal. So yeah, um, support our sponsors. It would mean a ton. And right now there's two. It's Avid Caddy and Ed Prather. Two. How many times did you get employee of the month at the old place? Zero. Zero. They didn't do the month. They did quarterly. There was an employee of the quarter. And I, I always wanted to win it. I did. I really did. It would have meant a lot to me. But in 15 and a half years, I won it zero times. So what's 15 times four? Uh, so it was it was awarded 60 times. I was 0 for 60. No joke, 0 for 60. I mean, it got a little ridiculous. 0 for 60? I got other recognition. I did get other recognition, but it was always like, like there was no way to avoid it. And I'll tell you one of the most ridiculous things of all time. This is when I knew things weren't great. Um, I asked Jokic the question about the parade and it went viral and um, there were over, over. We lost track at 20 million views on that interaction and then it went even skyrocketing more i mean it's probably somewhere in the 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 world of 100 million views maybe more at this point because it wasn't only that question and answer but then he said at the parade you know i want to fucking stay on parade right and that it got combined 
So the question, his answer, and then the answer a few days later, at the parade, that all got into one awesome mess. Beautiful mess. We had, you're going to love this. We had a presentation about digital media, highlighting successes in digital media for our company. And that wasn't recognized. I, I mean, I, I literally was like, you got to be kidding me. So it was like, it was like our group of stations, like what's working, what's good, what's to be recognized. And it didn't get brought up that there was an engagement that we had that, well, now it's well over a hundred million probably, but at the time it was well over 20 million, not one word about it. Unreal. And I mean, it was like, Hey, look at, uh, our van, uh, at the charity, you know, giveaway where we gave away 500 pairs of socks and, uh, you know, look at the Facebook posts and the Instagram and this link and that link, but, but nothing about the engagement that got more than 20 million views. And you want to talk about like moments of like, mm, things may not be working out here. Anyways. So, so right off the, so, so I, I'm getting a little serious here, but like getting employee of the month um, just was unreal and means so much. Not going to lie. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was incredible. Yeah. I know that might sound goofy and stupid and why do you, it meant a lot to me. So and that was, that was in my, um, how many, four months Working at 92.5 within four months. It's off the charts how much that means. Never forget it. All right. Let's get through all your comments the best that I can. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's sad, there's a lot of uh, local personalities like yourself that would be more than happy to give the Rockies FaceTime airtime. Sure. Even after York all night, watching Nuggets and oh, Cup and Championship. What's crazy is that you didn't get it after staying up all night. Oh, after the Avs, Nuggets won the championship. Yeah, listen, don't. I, it's in the past. I shouldn't go on about it as long as I have been. I'll let it go. I appreciate it, though. Thank you. I remember the show that Alfred caught the foul ball. The good old days. Agreed. That was amazing. The Rockies would be smart to do a little bit more grassroots PR. They would. All right. Let me go here. A few more here before we wrap things up. Awesome channel, DMAC. Oh, we just got to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. I thank you. <coughs> ah, what up, DMOC draft? I do love my mock drafts. I'm not going to lie. Tommy, that's insane. Tell you what. Rockies on TV. Why not abs or nuggets? Stay tuned, Benjamin. Stay tuned. Ever a bunch of a-holes. <laughs> well, the vast majority of people are are great um people, but the phew. uh all three are on Fubo. They are. That is true. That's not a lie. You can catch everything on Fubo. I know. But that is that's that's what I do. That's exactly what I do. Uh, <laughs> I have to listen to PhD through the app. That hideous painting is the first thing that pops up. Is that right? Does it really? I did not know that. Hold on. Seriously. I did not know that. Uh, all right, let me see if that is true. I don't know if that's still the case. No, that doesn't pop up right now. I got it without that popping up. Uh, that's too funny. Oh, well, it does pop up. There, there, there it is. And first of all, it's not hideous. Well, let's, let's be careful about a few things here. We all wished we looked as good as Vic supposedly looks in that painting. The funny thing is just picturing Vic naked. Uh, over under McKinnon goals or Rockies wins. Oh, my God. 
How many how many goals does Nate have right now? Oh my god, I don't even know. I don't. That's a great one. Well, I might have to steal that tomorrow. Uh, hold on. Uh, what does he got? Forty-five goals. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna go Rocky Swins over. Come on, he's got forty-five goals. There's what ten games left or so. I'll give him nine more goals. I'll put him at fifty-four. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Rockies. That's a fun one, but I'll take the Rockies. The Rockies are gonna win more than fifty-four games, I think. Is it more likely for Washington to trade down or New England? New England by a mile. Washington's not going to trade down. Zero chance. In fact, um, if you caught this, uh, Kelly, the LSU coach, um, said something about Jaden Daniels throwing passes for Washington. So I think Jane Daniels will be taken number two. I think Jane Daniels will be taken number two. I think um, the Patriots will do a deal. And the Vikings will trade up for Drake May. And it'll leave the Broncos in a great position to take J.J. McCarthy. That's what I think. Um, position players should kick field goals and punt. It's not bad. It's not a bad idea. All right, let me see. Oh, we're running out of time. My eyes, my eyes. Uh, I heard it's a hundred dollars for the season rock. Yeah. On, uh, yeah. The, the MLB app, Wesley, the Rockies, it's a hundred bucks. You watch every single Rockies game for a hundred bucks. You can order it at any time. That's it. Uh, suck it, Greg, 43 people. That's right. As we wrap things up, there's close to 500 people. Um, we commonly get this much a lot of times more and I'm doing some overtime right now. So I got to get to the abs game. So I got, this is great though today. This is great. Tons of engagement. Um, you can see that they're they're having a tournament getting going here at Avid Caddy. Um, call 303-376-3745. You can register for the championship watch along, which is on April 8th. I'll put that next time. April 8th. I'll be back here, I think, four days next week as we hype this stuff up. Um, the only days I'm not here are no, I can't be here on nuggets home games other than that we're good to go so find out more about advocati at advocati.com sign up at advocati.com slash dmac and that's the way that goes and call them anytime if you want to see what this place is all about get some free golfing for yourself just call 303-376-3745 you will be good to go good 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 i'll be back um if, listen, if I get home, I will do a Rockies watch long. I just don't know if I'm going to be home in time. But if I can get home in time, I will do that. We'll do bottom of the eighth watch long for the Rockies tonight. And I'm headed down to Ball Arena. I'm feeling better. I'm literally feeling better um, the longer that I'm on the air talking, which is pretty messed up considering I'm still sick. So don't understand why that's happening, but I love you. I appreciate you. Give a shout out to Ed Prather at edprather.com. And big doings with Ed and me come Monday. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye.